welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda. Takeda teaches algebra. I'm your host, Mr. Takeda, and I'm going to teach you some algebra right now. This is episode 7.4 on solving polynomial equations in factored form. Okay, so now these polynomials become equations, and we have to do something called factoring to them in order to solve them. Factored, what does that mean? Okay, so we'll learn about the zero product property. We'll talk about GCF, greatest common factor with polynomials, and then real life properties. Well, we'll just solve some, and then we'll get to those in class. Let's go, shall we? Hey, uh, the zero product property, this is something you kind of already know. Essentially, if the product, if you multiply two numbers together and the result is zero, then at least one of those numbers has to be zero. So for example, in algebra, we're gonna say A times B equals zero, then either A equals zero or B equals zero. You kind of know this already. If I was to just back it up a step, if I said two times X equals zero, well, then you know X has to equal zero. Okay, so this is something we call the zero product property. It has a name, something you've known since second grade. Let's uh, talk about these examples here. Now, these examples, these are polynomial equations but they're not written like you normally think of polynomials. I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit bigger here. 2x times the quantity x minus four equals zero. If I was to multiply these together, it would be some kind of binomial, right? But right now, this is what we call factored form. And what do we mean by factored form? That means it's uh, been, it's like, um, something that can be multiplied together. There are factors such as, you know, things that get multiplied together are factors. These are factors of a polynomial. Okay, so what do I have? I have a two and an X and an X minus four. Since they have got three things being multiplied together here. Well, what is the solution to this equation? Well, I know X has to be zero and X minus four can be zero. X can be zero and X minus four can be zero. So uh, solving X minus four equals zero, then I know X can equal four. So here X is four, X is zero. Two solutions here. The, uh, this is two solutions. Uh, this is what, this is a second degree. If I was to multiply this together, I'd have two X squared, that exponent of two, that tells us how many solutions we should expect. X minus three times X minus nine. Well, I'm multiplying X minus three times X minus nine. So X minus three can equal zero. X minus nine can equal zero. So solving the first one for X, adding three to both sides, X equals three. X minus nine equals zero. Oops plus nine, adding nine to both sides, x equals nine. Two solutions, okay? So that's example one. Those are in factored form. Uh, these examples, essentially the same thing, except um, a little different, uh, but basically the same thing. So let's just go through these here. Uh, 2x plus 7, 2x minus 7, uh, sum and difference pattern. It uh, doesn't really matter if it's a sum and difference pattern. Except for, we're going to say or in this case. I'll, I'll show what I mean here. So we have two things that are multiplied together. 2x plus 7, so that can equal 0. Or 2x minus 7 can equal 0. And we're going to consider this kind of an or case here. So subtracting seven from both sides here, two X equals negative seven. So X equals negative seven halves. Over here, I'm gonna add seven to both sides. So two X equals seven. So X equals seven halves. In this case, we're gonna say or. Uh, negative seven, or just, we'll just call, call it two separate uh, solutions there. Uh, this one's kind of a repeated thing, right? Because it's x minus 1 and x minus 1. So we only have to do it once. So x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1. 
This is going to result, this is a, a factored form of a trinomial. I have three different x's here. So x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 1, x equals 3, and x equals 2. And In that case, it's all of them. Or you could actually do it like this, x equals negative 1, uh, 2, 3. It doesn't matter what order it's in, but you can just like list them like that if you wanted to. Okay. So now, uh, factoring, uh, factoring out a... Um, factoring a polynomial is kind of one of the most complicated steps. At the beginning, it's kind of complicated, but you'll, you guys will get it right away. Um, here we go. How do you do this? Okay, so you're looking for the common factors between 4x to the 4th and 24x to the 3rd. Okay. Well, let's break this down here. Uh, so I have 4 and 24. So I know 4, I can think of, uh, I can think of 24 as uh, 4 times 6. And I can think of x, I'm going to write 4 here, and I can think of x to the 4th as x to the 3rd times x. That's x to the 3rd there. So what's common? x to the 3rd, x to the 3rd, and 4. So my greatest common factor between 4x to the 4th and 24x to the 3rd is 4x to the 3rd. Okay? 4x to the 3rd times x is 4x to the 4th. 4x to the 3rd times 6, 24x to the 3rd. Um, yeah. So that there's that one. So we'll be going over that in class, I'm sure, a lot. And now, finally, solving equations by factoring. Okay, so we're going to take everything that we did earlier in this video and combine it into solving equations a polynomial equation by factoring. So I have 2x squared plus 8x equals 0. So the first thing I want to do is what we call factoring out the greatest common factor. So between 8 and 2, my greatest common factor would be 2. I'm going to write it out here. And then between x squared and x, it's, if, we have a, if I have a common variable, it's always going to be uh, the one, uh, the smaller one. So x so that's going to leave what? If I factor x out of x squared, let me back up. If I factor 2 out of 2, that leaves 1. If I factor x out of x squared, that leaves x. If I factor 2 out of 8, that leaves 4. x out of x, 1. Okay. So make sure you did this right. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. Now, we're going to go back to, essentially, the first example. x equals 0, that x, or x plus 4 equals 0. So solving this one for x, x equals negative 4. So x is 0, x is negative 4. For example, b, this was example a, for example, b, 6n squared equals 15n. Well, in order to use the zero products property, I have to set one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 15n from both sides. 6n squared minus 15n equals zero. Okay, I subtracted 15n from both sides, so I have zero now on the right. Now I can factor out greatest common factor between 6n squared and 15n. So that would be, uh, this is 6 is 3 times 2, 15 is 3 times 5, so 3. And then for n squared and n, the one with a smaller exponent, n. So that's going to leave me uh, 6, uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2, n squared divided by n is n. And then uh, three, uh, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and n divided by n is 0. 
Now, one thing that comes up now that's really for the first time, if you've done this correctly, and actually in both these examples you can see this, if you've done this correctly, I shouldn't have any common factors left between the uh, two terms in the binomial that's remaining. So 2 and 5 are what we call relatively prime. They share no common factors. The variable n only exists in the first term here, but not in the second. So this, this looks good. Over here, of course, x and 4, there's no common factors over here. So let's go back to this one. Okay, so now this is factored properly. So over here, n is going to equal 0. And then 2n minus 5 equals 0. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides here. So 2n equals 5. So n equals 5 halves. And n equals 0. Okay, that's it. Those are all the examples that we have for us today. We'll do some uh, word problems in class. That's it. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.